This site is crazy. You're going to lose hours of your time. You may or may not thank me for it later, but oh man, I have not seen anything like this and it is endless entertainment. You may not agree with me, but let's find out. This is called WebSim.ai and it creates websites on the fly strictly from a web prompt and your imagination. This can be the craziest stuff you've ever imagined. You want to see a website dedicated to cheese? Just navigate over to WebSim.ai and it's going to open up its own little imaginary browser in here and just treat it like a browser. What do you want that site to be called? How about a website devoted to photographs taken in the kingdom of cheese? Now, I can just say, a web dedicated to photographs in the kingdom of cheese. Watch this. So here it comes in seconds. I haven't done any editing. I'm just talking you through this as it's generating this in real time. Cheese realm photography, capturing the essence of the kingdom of cheese. Now, it is a little bit laughable. The design of this is like 1990. But look. It's actually generating these images with AI on the fly. Explore the wondrous kingdom of cheese through our lens, from the towering cheddar cliffs to the bubbling fondue springs. Now, this doesn't look very cheesy to me, but look, we've got an About Us section. You can commission a photo shoot or purchase prints. Reach out. If I click Visit the Kingdom, now it will actually create a website based on that link, Visit the Kingdom. And here it comes. Welcome to the kingdom of cheese. And look at that. The cursor is a piece of cheese. Are you kidding me right now? So now we have an about section, attractions, accommodations even. Where to stay? The Ritz Camembert. All right. The Brie and Breakfast. See, it's all just, it's just having fun. In that case, we just describe the type of site we want. But let's just come up with a URL like we want to go to HTTP my luggage. Dot com. Let's just see what it comes up with, with AlienStoleMyLuggage.com without any other guidance. Now, while this is happening, I should tell you that I'm using it in a very silly, most rudimentary way. I'm going to show you some examples of what other people have done with more complicated prompts that is just mind-blowing. Alien Stole My Luggage. Look at that. They created an animation with a flying saucer. Interstellar Lost and Found. Welcome Earthlings and Intergalactic Travelers. Not a lot going on down here, but I think it's still maybe working found items that the page finished loaded. Welcome earthlings and intergalactic travelers. You can report your missing luggage. You can file a report. Again, the font choices and everything about this screams another century. So this wasn't a very complicated site. How about we do something practical like a dog themed site that converts cooking measurements. Okay, so we have Pawfect portions, doggy dish measurement converter. We've got another little animated thing. Four cups to tablespoons convert. It actually works. Four cups is approximately 64 tablespoons. Let's say we want to convert ounces to milliliters. Convert. There you go. All done. You could actually use this site and if you wanted to bookmark it, this is the URL up here that you would save and this site will be there for you when you get back. Now because it's actually using, in this case, Claude Sonnet 3.5, you can also choose GPT-40 or these other models as well to grab the information. It can actually draw on the knowledge that it has in its system. So it's not just all imaginary. In other words, if I wanted to create, let's see, www the history of the internet dot com. And let's just see what it comes up with. An interactive timeline. Check it out. Okay. ARPANET, the precursor to the modern internet, is created by the U.S. Department of Defense. Learn more. If we click that, it's still creating a new page. It's not linking to any government site, or at least that's what it looks like. Yeah, here we go, exploring the origins of networked computing. And here it draws out the whole thing. Let's see, can I go back? Yes. The first email is sent by Ray Tomlinson using the at symbol. Discover the first email. Come on, I gotta see what's going on here. In 1971, a computer engineer named Ray Tomlinson sent the first ever electronic mail. The at symbol, the whole thing. Now I wanna show you some stuff about the image creation too. So let's create a photography site dedicated to manhole covers around 
the world. So hopefully it will actually generate more images than what it's been doing, which is mostly textual. Okay, so it's created this page. Discovering the hidden art beneath our feet. Explore the fascinating world of manhole covers from across the globe. Let's click one of these. Clicking these doesn't do anything, but if I right mouse click, we get some new choices. I can copy this image, copy this to the image address, or I can click on Delve. So I'm gonna click on Delve, and it's gonna create a new page at our site called manholecovers.world. And now here's a close-up of our New York City Statue of Liberty manhole cover, but this is an AI generated image, and yet here's a whole deep dive on it. Doesn't exist, but we've got a whole history of it right now. If I right mouse click it, I could say re-roll image and it will create a new version of this thing. And another one. Well, when we click on gallery, we've got access to other countries and all of this. Now, actually these things, I don't know, may be real, and, but the images that are being generated are of course AI. I don't really know if there are Statue of Liberty manhole covers in and around the sidewalk, but I do know that the site is very clearly creating AI images of it. Clicking these buttons right now doesn't really seem to do anything, but again, if I wanted to, I could do a deep dive into the Cairo pyramids with Delve. I don't know why they don't make these just clickable links instead of clicking Delve. There's another AI image. Cairo's urban beautification project in preparation for hosting the 2009 Pan Arab Games. I don't know, maybe this is true. Interactive map showing locations of the manhole cover in Cairo would be displayed here. Submit your sighting. Let's see what happens if I click on that. Submit your manhole cover discovery. Wow, look at that. You can input the location, the coordinates, everything about it, and then submit discovery, which we won't do. How about silly looking people in photos.com? Just real quick, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel and this is the type of stuff you're interested in, why not click that subscribe and notify button? This is the kind of stuff we talk about all the time, and we have a great deal of fun doing it. And if you want to dig deeper into any of these topics, check out our AI Lab Essentials membership. It's low cost, but it gives you access to a lot of in-depth information that it isn't practical to share here on these quicker-paced YouTube videos, which we're going to get back to right now. I'm really just trying to get it to generate more visually interesting things. And then we're going to take a look at what some serious people are doing with this tool. Another animated icon. These fonts, though. All right, let's see. So we see what's coming. A groom making an exaggerated surprised face while the bride looks annoyed. Okay, all AI-generated images, obviously. Check out our categories for more side-splitting snapshots. All right, let's click on categories and see what it comes up with. Okay, choose your flavor of funny. Each category is a portal to a world of giggles. Okay, I'm loving this. Oh, look at this. We got the sports oopsies. They've come up with the, the captions and everything in all of these images. Bad hair day, food face, awkward family photos. Oh, we gotta, we gotta see what it's gonna come up with. If it starts generating awkward family photos, I, I will be so pleased. But the fact that it came up with all those categories on its own with no extra direction for me, all I did was give it the name of the URL. Okay, family moments gone hilariously wrong. Where family love meets unintentional humor. Oh, please, please, please finish out this page. Don't just stop there. Okay, good. Family of five all wearing matching denim outfits with permed hair. Family sitting on Santa's lap with one child screaming. I love the Santa's Little Nightmares, the Denim Dynasty, the Mullet Family, Business in Front, Party in the Back. Okay, okay, here we go, here we go. Oh, so good! It doesn't look like I can click this, but I'll bet you I can delve. I can! I have to delve. Well, hold on. I have to. When Pets Hijack Picture Day, Beach Day Jenga, Human Edition. This is good. Oh, look at this, a whole thing. Here's the photo submission tips, why we love awkward family photos. Do we need to do this? The pretzel family, twisted with love. I wanna check out the mullet family, I'm gonna delve. Then I think I should re-roll the image too. I wanna to see what other mullet family they come up with. Let's just, well, I can re-roll it here, I think. All right, there they are, the mullet family, where everyday hair is a hair-raising experience. Oh my gosh, look at this, dad's mullet. The classic, I'm a responsible accountant who moonlight, moonlights as a rock star look. Fun mullet fact. The mullet hairstyle has been around since ancient times. Why we love this photo. It captures everything we adore about awkward family photo. It even tells you why it likes its imaginary photo. Let me re-roll this image and create a new one. I just want to see what it will come with. So good. So good. Uh, one more. One more. I just, there's something about the mullet family. It's just too good. Okay, okay, okay. So to go back to the main page and look at what other people are doing that is way more mind-blowing. Like, for example, hyper-visualized 3D extreme. What? That's right. From a text prompt, ladies and gentlemen. Now, unfortunately, I don't know how we see 
how they did this. This thing is interactive. You can drag and it changes the particle size, noise scale, noise speed, camera speed. It's all right here. Now, it's not immediately obvious like how they did this. I don't think they just typed hyperdimensional visualization 3D extreme, although I'm gonna copy that and try it. Let me click on Delve and see what we can find. Nothing! So I don't know how they did this, but they did it at the very same site that we created Awkward Family Photos. So pretty amazing. I have to try that by just replacing hyperdimensional visualization 3D extreme dot dork. And let's just see if it does anything. I feel like it probably needed a lot more prompting than just that. Oh, hold on. What's this? Hyperdimensional visualization, add dimension. All right, I'm gonna, I clicked a dimension. Toggle auto rotation. Oh, maybe it's not, oh wait, it wasn't done. Okay, I just clicked toggle auto rotation and obviously you can see that it is doing its thing. Now it's not the same thing generated before, but by just typing in that URL dot dork, I got this. Add dimension, add dimension, add dimension, add dimension. Look at that. Reset. Okay, add dimension, add dimension, add dimension, add dimension. I can't really control it with my mouse or anything. Let's see, see if I just say control view with mouse. Now I have no, I'm just making that stuff up, but there's no reason in the world for me to believe that that is going to do anything. But what if it does? Oh look, mouse controls, left click and drag, rotate right. Okay, hold on, let's add a dimension. Oh, it's not done loading yet. There's nothing, nothing there. But it looks like it was trying with the mouse controls. I really wanted that to work. Now let's go back home. Check this out, a 3D Taurus viewer with custom default settings, use GUI control. So in this case, see, I can click and drag with my mouse. I can control the view. I can zoom in and out. That's the kind of stuff I wanted to be able to do. So it would be great to know exactly how they did this, but it's still extraordinary that you can just come to a site and it just generates it on the freaking fly like that. Changing the color in real time, <laughs> change the map intensity, turn off the auto rotate. Oh, you can even change the shape to a sphere and a cube. So I can't even imagine what the command must have been. I can't really go deeper if I close controls. Oh, I see, open and close controls. It just makes me wonder, did they type, how much of this did they type in? Hey, I want to be able to control shape and resolution and color, and I want it to be this, you know, how much plain English can you do? 3D object visualizer, where I can choose between a sphere, a cube, and a torus, and choose from a set of materials like wood, chrome, tree bark, I want to be able to control the view of the object with my mouse so I can pan and zoom around it. I wonder if I had said, and call the site, you know, Gizmotron, it would have done it. All right, 3D object visualizer, use GUI to change shape and material, click and drag to rotate. It's working on it. Look at that. All right, we got a little flashing going on, which wasn't intentional, but there's sphere and a cube. Oh my gosh. And a torus. I am zooming in with my mouse wheel. I am moving it around with my mouse exactly as I asked. I can change the material Ooh, to chrome. I need more light. Tree bark. Mm, that didn't work so well. Brick. Oh, they threw brick in there. So we've got some general overall lighting issues, but pretty amazing that it actually took my text prompt and did this with it. Can I create a game? Create a Tetris game with a photo of snowy mountain as the backdrop. I want to control falling brick with my mouse. Instructions on the screen with a start and a reset button. Here we go. We got a background. Start game. Oh, wait. Oh, my God. Okay, 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 okay. All right, well, <laughs> probably should throw in some speed controls, but oh my God, I don't know any coding and I just told it to do that and, and it pretty much did. So if you want to spend half your day doing stuff that's probably not going to get you anywhere in life, go check out websim.ai. And if you create some really cool ones, why not leave links in the comments? I mean, you know, why not? We're a community, right? We're a bunch of friends. Oh, by the way, if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, it seems like to me now would be a great time. I mean, you could put it on your calendar for later, but let's face facts, it's probably not going to happen. So just click subscribe and notify now because the creative uses of AI are the things we talk about all the time. If you subscribe now, I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you do not, I will look for you. I will find you.
and I will.